Hey there, my name is Gardner and this is DIY Cloud. Today we're going to talk about Ubiquity, which is a comic and ebook library that lives in your personal cloud. Let's get started. So, the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually set up a new Linode. So let's go ahead and do that from the Linode Cloud Manager. Now, you can choose any distro that you would like here. Uh, I personally am a fan of Ubuntu LTS. Uh, so we'll choose Ubuntu 2004 LTS. And let's go ahead and select a region that's close to us. Since I'm in the Northeast United States, I'm gonna choose Newark, New Jersey. Now we can get away with a one gigabyte Linode here, uh, but uh, if you're gonna be running any kind of applications besides Ubiquity on here, then you might want something a little bit uh, larger in capacity. Now down here, we can just say Ubiquity demo. And uh, we can choose a tag. These are completely optional. And then you need to enter a, rem a password here. And that's all you need to do to set up a Linode. And there we go. Uh, we are all up and running now. So let's go ahead and log into our Linode. Let's open up our terminal and type in ssh root at and then the IP address of our Linode. And we want to type in yes because we trust this uh, new authentication string here. And then we want to type in our password. Let's see if I remember what I actually typed in there. Hey, that worked. All right. <laughs> All right, so now that we're logged in, we need to actually install Docker on this machine. Now you can install it from the package manager, but typically you wanna install it uh, from uh, directly from Docker's uh, website because <laughs> with Ubuntu especially, you're gonna have uh, kind of outdated packages. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is actually apt install, apt transport, HTTPS. We also want CA-certificates, curl, software, properties, common. Now these are, some of these are uh, prerequisites here. It looks like the only one you actually need is app transport HTTPS, which is good. Now you'll find the commands that I'm using uh, in the description. Uh, make sure that uh, you copy and paste them exactly if you want to, or you can type them in manually, which is uh, more recommended. So what this command does is it downloads uh, the PGP key, which is a way of cryptographically signing uh, packages that come from this repository. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. This is a security feature uh, and it's really good to have this installed. All right, next up, what we wanna do is add our repository uh, from docker.com to our system so that we can download the latest version of Docker from uh, docker.com. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now we're updating our uh, repository and we're looking for new packages that are available. So the next command that we're gonna run is uh, apt install docker-ce. And uh, if you weren't running as root, you would actually put sudo before this command. And we're going to uh, hit yes because we wanna download all of this. Now we can just double check that we're running the latest version of Docker and it looks like we are. So if you weren't running as root, you would preface all of these commands with sudo. Um, but uh, because I'm running as root, I don't need to do that. So now what we wanna do is start Docker. So we'll do systemctl start Docker. And then we'll also do systemctl enable Docker. Now. The difference between these two commands is that start will start Docker immediately. Enable means that uh, Docker will start by itself when the system starts. Now we want to actually check that that actually took hold. So we do system CTL status Docker. And there we go. We see we it says active and running and it also says enabled. So that means that when the system starts, then Docker will start up with it. You can hit Q to quit, and I'll just clear the screen here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use linuxserver.io's uh, Docker image of Ubiquity. Uh, there's two ways to do this. You can use Docker Compose, uh, which is my preferred method, or you can use the regular Docker CLI method. Um, personally, the Docker CLI method, I just find to be a bit obtuse. So I tend to actually use uh, Docker Compose whenever I'm using uh, uh, Docker. Uh, let's, so let's go ahead and get Docker Compose. 
So this command is going to download Docker Compose from uh, Docker's GitHub, uh, and then it's going to move it into our uh, path so that when we type in Docker Compose in, in Linux, uh, it will actually activate that command. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. Now the last thing we have to do is chmod plus x uh, user local uh, bin docker compose. So this is going to apply executable permission to the docker compose binary. So now let's test to make sure that we do have docker installed. And there we go, we have docker compose installed. So the next thing that uh, I like to do is to create a new directory. So we're gonna make a directory and we're gonna call it docker compose. And then I like to CD into that directory and I'll make another one and we'll call this ubiquity and we'll CD into that. And now we'll create a file called uh, docker compose dot yaml. Now I'm lifting this docker compose script right from the docker images uh, github page. All right, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you specify your time zone, defaults to Europe, uh, London, and then uh, you wanna specify your max memory here. Uh, 1024 megabytes uh, is what Milo Node is set for. Uh, and then you wanna set your uh, volume. So this is where all of your progress is stored as you're reading your books. This is going to be uh, where your actual books are stored. This is where your comics are stored. And this is where your files, your random files are gonna be stored. So once you have all of this specified, you can hit Control X and then hit yes to mo save the m modifications to the file and then hit uh, enter for Docker Compose uh, to save it to that same file. So now what we wanna do is uh, Docker Compose uh, up and then dash D. And there we go. Now we have Ubiquity running. So let's grab our IP address here. And let's paste it in here. And then we want to do 2203. Uh, two, and then I believe it's uh, Ubiquity slash admin. And there we go. Now we have to choose an administrator password here. And uh, okay, we're logged in now. All right, so now that we have our Ubiquity uh, instance set up, let's copy over some files. So we'll quit our SSH session here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll do SCP, and then uh, we wanna do slash, uh, let's see, downloads, Cory Doctorow, and then we wanna place that in our uh, home gbryant, uh, ubiquity books directory. And let's type in our password. And now that that looks like it worked. So we've copied our uh, PDF of when sysadmins ruled the earth. If you haven't read it, it's a great story. And we're copying it to our remote system uh, here. Now it looks like that works. So if we go back into our admin area here and we uh, launch a new scan, looks like we found our book here. So let's go to Ubiquity and go to books. Cory Doctorow. Let's read it. Isn't that cool? And you can see here that we can uh, move forward and backwards. And you can see that, you know, we have uh, some uh, keyboard commands, fit to height, fit to width, original size. Uh, you can see uh, progress is made here. And so if we were to like close this book and go back in and read, it should bring us right back to where we were. Yes, page three. Uh, so there you go, that is that is Ubiquity. It's actually a really cool little app. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and it kind of ties in well with uh, my own website that I'm working on, hellostory.org. I don't have PDFs over there yet, but uh, I will pretty soon, so it'll be pretty nice. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what we're doing here on Linode's channel, hit that like button. It really helps us out. You can also subscribe if you want to see all the content we have coming out over here. Uh, I got to say, we have some really awesome content here, and it's not just the stuff that I make. 
Um, <laughs> but I think that's going to do it for now. Thank you for watching DIY Cloud, and I'll see you in the next one.